Hello, I'm Brandon Warner, and I'm here to discuss uh, how to build Xamarin solutions uh, with authentication uh, and Microsoft Graph. So, uh, I'm Brandon Warner. I'm a program manager inside the Identity team. What we'll be doing here is first an introduction, uh, kind of explaining exactly what we're going to be reviewing uh, in this session, as well as the authentication flow for native devices. There's a few things now that we've switched to a different model that uses the system browser that you might want to be aware of. Another thing that uh, we're going to talk about is uh, the steps that you would take in uh, authenticating a user and then calling the Microsoft Graph and some gotchas that you might want to watch for inside of the code. And then we'll jump right into a demo. And after that, I'll show you how to look up these resources yourself. So uh, first, as way of introduction, uh, I'll be showing you how to call or how to download the Xamarin Studio app for Mac. Uh, we'll be using Mac OS today. I'll also show you how to uh, download the Xamarin Forms and uh, configure a Xamarin Forms application to authenticate to the graph uh, with iOS or Android. So you can use one base uh, and call both of those platforms, use both of those platforms. Uh, and finally, uh, I'll demonstrate how you can call both a consumer and a business account uh, using one SDK. That's a neat capability that we're introducing uh, with MSAL and with our new identity endpoint uh, that a lot of customers have been asking for. So as we look at uh, what we're going to be demonstrating here, you see that there are uh, many platforms that the Xamarin, uh, that the Xamarin uh, application can target. You can write it for iOS, you can write it for Android, and you can write it for uh, Windows Universal uh, platform. And what we're going to be doing here is calling, it, uh, calling interactively to get a token from the, Microsoft, uh, from the Microsoft Azure Active Directory endpoint. And then we're going to be using that to call the graph. And what you'll see is that we're going to be calling a particular scope uh, called user read, which you want to use in order to access the graph as you, as the user. It's the default permission that we, that we set up when you first create your application. And that allows you to um, access the graph as if uh, you were that user. Uh, so the signed in user would have those permissions. Once you have a token with those permissions, you would then go and access the Microsoft Graph. And I'll show you both of those. So one of the other things I wanted to bring up uh, before we get to the demo itself is that there's a new pattern we're using now uh, for secure authentication. One of the things that you'll see in the, in the marketplace, uh, especially with SDKs uh, from Google and Facebook and now Microsoft, is that we're moving to transitioning to the system browser. The system browser allows you to sign in decoupled from the application, and that's important for two reasons. Uh, one of them is security. So when you sign in uh, to an embedded browser today or you sign in using forms based off, those credentials are available to the application. So the application can listen in to those credentials and then uh, use them without the user's permission to access other resources, and that's something we don't want. Uh, another benefit of using the system browser is that you get single sign-on SSO. Once you've signed into the system browser, your credentials are stored there. So if you signed in with an Azure Active Directory account or a Microsoft account, uh, any other application that's uh, on that device that is using the system browser as well, using this pattern, will get SSO. And uh, previously, when, we, uh, when people have used the system browser, there's been a usability issue because that there's a transition between the application and the system browser, whether it's Safari or Chrome uh, on Android. And the uh, technology has changed now so that both Apple and Google have provided mechanisms so that the system browser can look native to the application, although it does have the security boundary. And in, uh, in iOS, it's called the Safari View Controller. And uh, on Google, Android, it's called Chrome, Chrome Custom Tabs. And the MSAL library has support for both of these and uses them uh, to create a better user experience. And you'll see that in the Xamarin demo I'm going to do. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to point you to in the direction of Visual Studio Tools for Xamarin. So as you see here, there's a download for Mac. Uh, there's Community, Professional, and Enterprise. The Community Edition is free. Uh, you can download it, and everything we're doing here can be done um, with the Community Edition uh, 2017 for Mac. So we'll be using this, uh, as you'll see, and we'll also be using uh, this sample, which is Active Directory Xamarin Native V2. Uh, everything you see uh, that I'll be demoing today is inside of this sample, and you'll be able to modify it and use it uh, as you need. So to get started, the first thing we will do is jump into developer.microsoft.com, which is the start of most things you're going to want to do uh, with Azure and with the Microsoft Graph. As you see here, uh, there's a My Apps button. Normally, when you sign, uh, you'll have to sign in first. You see if I've already signed in. So you click on My Apps. 
and you'll get the application dashboard. And here you see that I've already registered a few client IDs and app IDs, uh, and we're going to create a new app. So here, we're going to name it something really simple. Click Create. And you see that it's created an application ID for us, as well as allow us to select certain platforms. So this is the application ID that you will use to identify your client application to the service. Now, one of the things I always like to bring up is the fact that the application ID itself, although it is used to identify uh, the application to the service, it is not itself a secure ID that you can use uh, and rely upon to be secure when you communicate with us. Uh, there's a few people uh, that have used the application ID as a way of identifying uh, that this particular app is um, the true app that's installed on the device, and no device gives that guarantee. Uh, it's helpful to remember that OAuth 2 in particular authenticates a user to a resource. It does not authenticate an application to a resource, so that's important to understand. You'll see that we have the ability to add a platform, and we're going to click that, and we're building a native application since Xamarin's targeting iOS and Android. We're going to click that, and you see that it automatically created a new custom URI for us, and you're going to see that that's a very important uh, reply URI that allows us to return back uh, to the application once we've launched into the system web view. Finally, there's Microsoft Graph permissions, and this are, these are the permissions that you're going to be requesting as an application to the Microsoft Graph. So we're starting with user.read, that's all we need for our particular demo, but you would add others as your application becomes more uh, evol and evolved and you'll, and you'll want to access other parts of the Microsoft Graph. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And just like that, we have an application that's ready to go. So I'm going to go into Xamarin Studio here, Visual Studio. And I'm going to first kind of go through a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the uh, layout here. So we have the user details client, which is the actual Xamarin, Xamarin client that we'll be building and using for our UI. And then we have uh, two different variants, one for uh, Android and one for iOS. And you'll see that these are just uh, shims that connect you into the Xamarin application itself. So the first thing we'll want to do is add Microsoft Identity Client, uh, the NuGet package. And so the, what you'll want to do in order to access this is make sure Show Pre-Release Packages are clicked. And then you'll click Add Package. Also make sure that the latest version is selected. And you'll see that Microsoft.Identity.Client has been added to our application. So now let's dive into the actual application itself. So you see here we have uh, app.cs which serves as the entry point for our application. It creates an instance of itself uh, and currently sets it to null, as well as also creates some constants that we'll want to fill in. So you see here we have our scope, user.read, that we know we're going to be requesting uh, of Azure Active Directory in order to call the graph. And then we'll want to put our client ID in here. So we're going to go back to this application, or to this, uh, application registration, and we're going to pull our application ID right here and then put it in there. And now after that, you see, by the way, if you look down here, the redirect URI, uh, the code actually creates and crafts that redirect URI you see inside the portal. It adds the client ID and then slash slash off. Again, this is the redirect URI that we'll use to go from the system browser back to the application. If we then click on the main page, you'll see that this is a very simple Xamarin form that has a bunch of hidden labels. Uh, for first name, last name, things are going to pull from the graph. And then we have the sign-in button. If we click on the actual uh, code behind, you'll see that we do two different things. And the pattern here is very important to, to understand. First, every time you load an application, you'll always want to check to see if there's already a signed-in user. And that's what we do right here. Uh, you always want to call this, uh, you always want to call into the cache that we have available using acquire token silent async. Uh, pulling, uh, sending out your scopes, as well as also asking for the first or default user to see if he's in there. Uh, if 
there isn't a user, then it will throw an exception. And that's when you catch that exception and then go into what we call interactive login or uh, sign in. Uh, at this point, what will happen is the button will show sign in uh, because we've established that we don't have a signed in user. And then uh, what you would do here, if you click that button, sign in, is it will launch this piece of code. Here we have the authentication result again, which is where we store our authentication. And then we're going to call uh, acquire token async. So you notice we're not trying to do silent here, which means that we do want to have an interactive session. We do want the user to be prompted. Uh, and then we pass the scopes and, of course, the app UI parent that we'll, what we'll be using to uh, paint this UI for sign in. Uh, and then you see we have a method called refresh user data. That will be our call to the graph that I'll be talking about in a bit. And then we provide that method our access token. And then we just change the button to sign out. Finally, uh, if the user is in a state where they're signed in and the label says sign out, uh, we'll want to remove that user from the cache. And then finally, the refresh user data. So here what you see is we are uh, taking a, we're creating a new HTTP client. We are calling the graph API, and we've hard-coded it right here as the me uh, endpoint. And because the graph API is a REST API, uh, this is a simple GET request. We can use uh, any type of mechanism here. We're just sending an HTTP uh, client with a request message of, uh, of this endpoint. Then we need to set an authorization header. So we'll set the bearer token. Uh, we'll set the bearer authorization header and then add the token in. And then after that, we'll call the graph and we'll get this response uh, after sending the message. We'll get back JSON, uh, as all good REST APIs do. And that response string will await uh, this uh, will await the reading of the string, uh, so it would convert from JSON to a string. And if it's successful, at this point, we will parse uh, the individual parts of the JSON that we got and write it to the labels. And then at that point, we'll go ahead and set sign out again just to be sure. So that's the Xamarin piece of this. Now let's go into iOS and see what we need to do to configure uh, iOS access. So first, If we click on uh, main CS and main page render, you see that these simply uh, push over to the Xamarin app itself. So a lot of the stuff, if you're a native iOS developer, will look, uh, will look familiar to you. But it really is just a way to hook into the existing Xamarin app that uh, sits on top that we've edited. Where the, the, we'll want to put code is the app delegate. So you see here we have this when finished launching uh, going on inside of iOS. And it's right here that we will want to inject our code. So what I'm going to do is start writing some code here to access and return back uh, from the system web view, uh, return back to the application itself. So here, here we're going to go public, override bool, and we're going to do an open URL. And as if you remember what I said before, um, an open URL will allow you to open URL will allow you to access an application, uh, or will allow you to open up the system browser uh, and provide a URL along with some parameters that you'll need for completing the OAuth two flow. So here we have uh, it's already auto completed some stuff for us. So we're going to send it the app. the URL. And then the next thing we're going to do is pass in our options. And once we've called this URL, what we're going to want to do then is send this back as a continuation event, the URL. And then finally, of course, return true. So if you look at what we did here, 
uh, we sent a open URL request uh, inside uh, the a iOS application itself. We provided the app, it's the application, we provided the URL that we need, and we've also provided the options uh, that we'll need to call the URL, the authentication URL. We've also at, that, at this point added the uh, callback, and we've said, all right, now when this URL comes back to us, it will have an auth code in it. Uh, please send this auth code back to the library, which is what set authentication continuation events args does. So, Another thing we need to do is make sure that we've configured correctly. Let me clean this up a little bit. Here we go. So the next thing we'll want to do is actually configure the application itself uh, to listen on the correct reply URI. So if you recall, I said one of the things that, that uh, people uh, usually stumble upon is actually having the correct reply URI being listened to for the individual application. So here we're going to go into the info p list. And you see here there's something called a URL scheme. And this URL scheme is uh, what an application in iOS listens to uh, for a reply back to itself. So when the system browser is done authenticating, it will call back to this URL scheme. So we're going to go ahead and go to our browser. And if you notice, we have this custom redirector I already set up. So we're going to go back to our Xamarin application and put it in there. And we're going to save. At this point, we should have the code correct, as well as the way to call back into the code. And so I'm going to launch the iPhone simulator uh, using 11.3 and see if it works. So you see here's the form, uh, the Xamarin Forms sample, and we have the sign-in button just like we expect it. So we're going to click sign in. And you see here, this launches the system web view, or the system browser for uh, iOS. And one of the things to call out here is that you see it does look somewhat native to the application. You didn't see a transition to Safari. Uh, however, you do have a few things that we think improve security, such as the fact that you have a lock icon now, and it shows you exactly the URL that you are signing in with to make sure you're not being spoofed or signing into a separate um, location besides the one that you expect from Microsoft. There also is a way to go out of the Safari browser itself. So if you don't want to be inside this web view, if you click this, it will launch into Safari. Even if you do that because of the reply URI, it will still work. And it will, the Safari, uh, the Safari app itself will return uh, to our app. Let's go ahead and sign in with a business application. And you see what we're doing, what what's happening here is we're being asked to consent. So one of the things that's um, built into the Microsoft Identity Platform is if you have an application you've built as a developer and you want uh, a user to access it, the user has to consent uh, to the permissions that you've asked for. And here we've asked user.read. So it's telling us uh, we want to be able to sign in as you and read your profile and access your data at any time. Access your data at any time simply means that we will put something on the device that allows us to continue to get a new access token uh, without having to prompt the user. And of course, that's a refresh token for those of you that know. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and accept. And you see that just like that, it can, comes back. And we've called the graph, and we've gotten our data. Now, one of the other things I wanted to demonstrate about the system web view is that if you see I sign out, and then I want to sign in again, it goes back to the uh, Safari View Controller. And you see that now I have an account chooser. So I can actually pick an account, and I don't have to sign in again a second time. That's very useful for people uh, that are building, not only the developers that are building applications, but also users that rely on this identity platform. They don't have to type in their password again. They can simply sign in uh, to different applications and see that user. If they do want to remove their account from Safari View Controller, they can just click Sign Out or Sign Out and Forget, and they'll be prompted to sign in again. As another demonstration, I'll show you that we can also sign in using consumer accounts. 
So here, we use another example demo account. And here you see we get the consent view for, uh, for Microsoft accounts, the consumer uh, accounts that we also have inside of the Microsoft Identity Platform. And you see that the, uh, the consents are pretty much the same. It wants to access your info anytime, sign you in, and view your basic profile, and read your profile. So we're going to go ahead and consent to that as well. And you see that we've called the Microsoft Graph now in the consumer uh, scenario with a consumer, uh, with a consumer identity, and it works. And again, if the user wanted to sign in, we launch the Safari View Controller again, and you'll see that now I have both accounts signed in uh, that I can choose from, which is really convenient and something that we haven't had, uh, haven't been able to deliver before to developers and to customers. So now, let's go ahead and do the last bit, which is configure Android. So we have the Android application here. And here we're going to go into the main activity, uh, where, of course, this is the same entrance. It's the same equivalent to iOS, where this will be what loads the Xamarin form uh, and hands off control to the uh, Xamarin application we have above. So we're going to write, essentially, the same code, just in Java. We're going to say on this activity result, then we're going to send it the request code. The result, and then of course the intent, which is the data that has come back to us from the uh, from the system browser, Chrome Custom Tabs. And inside of this, we're going to send back up to the activity result our request code that we got, the result code, and of course, the data, the intent. And then finally, you might remember authentication continuation helper, which is how we then call back uh, or tell the uh, SDK exactly what to listen back for. And we're going to send it the same thing, request code, the result data, I'm sorry, the request code, the result code, and the data. Go and make sure this is right. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And then we're going to go into the Android manifest, where a lot of you will be used to configuring a uh, configuring your um, your settings for your particular application. And here you see we're going to listen in for a scheme on our intent again off, so this should look familiar. And then we have this MSAL string again. So let's go ahead and take the MSAL string that we have uh, from our application and put it in here. And you can see how this with the host off and then this will look exactly like to the application, this custom redirect URI that we've been given. So at that point, we should be good to go. Let's go and launch into Droid. And launch the application. And we're going to go ahead and switch to our emulator here. So we have the Android emulator uh, running here with our app. We'll click Sign In. 
And here you see that we also launch into the system browser uh, supported on Android. However, it's Chrome Custom Tabs. Uh, here you see there's a lot of the same benefit, such as the fact that you see the URL that we're signing into, as well as a like lock icon to say that, yes, uh, it is a valid site. Just go ahead and sign in. And you see the exact same thing happens because we're using the exact same uh, Xamarin Forms application. It displays uh, all the information from the graph. And of course, we have the same capability of signing out and signing in again. And here you see that we'll get the same account chooser. Again, a great thing for customers. Okay, so just to recap what we've done, uh, we've done three different things and they were very easy to do. Uh, first, we installed the MSL, MSAL preview for .NET. Uh, we've updated our code inside the actual Xamarin application to authenticate the user. We then also added a method to call the Microsoft Graph, uh, calling me in order to get the information about the current logged in user. And then the last thing we needed to do was just go into each individual platform and configure their reply URI, what they listen to uh, when the application SDK comes back or when the system browser comes back to the application SDK uh, and then the user can continue to authenticate. There's three resources that you should be interested in. Uh, of course, Xamarin for Mac OS, which I showed you. Uh, you can download that for free and get started. Uh, that will also download Visual Studio for Mac, uh, which is a great product. MSAL Preview for .NET, uh, the NuGet itself, has a lot of good documentation and code, and it's also open source on GitHub. So you can click that and learn more about where we are there with that particular SDK. And finally, uh, using Xamarin Forms uh, with MSAL, the sample that I showed you here, is available on GitHub. You can download it and run it yourself and examine everything you can do with Xamarin deploying to both iOS and Android using the new MSAL SDK. Thank you.